Hey everyone, Sparrow here. Hope you're having a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it may be for you so far. Today's video is brought to you by a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. I'm definitely kidding about the blood, but sweat and tears. Well, let's just say I seriously considered moving on to a different habitat this week because this one was not working. I think I was seven hours in at one point and I still hadn't completed the backstage building or any of the foliage or enrichment in the habitat. Not to mention the scenery outside of the habitat, like garden beds between pathways, path lighting, and all of that fun stuff. But hey, we made it. So the only thing I really knew about this habitat was that I wanted to have a mountain backdrop. And this is because doll sheep live in areas of high elevation with lots of cliffs that they are specially adapted to. Having never built a mountain in Planet Zoo before, I watched a bunch of tutorials, which I'll link in the description below, and then just started messing with the terrain. As you saw, I started with a big square block using the stamp tool, and then used the flatten to foundation brush to drag the terrain out on the sides. Just start at the top of the block and used quick strokes all around to raise the terrain. The flatten to surface tool was also very useful here because it allowed me to create those sheer faces on the front of the mountain. I'm going to guess they're probably around 85 to 90 percent grade in how steep they are, which is perfect for our little climbers. Then I used a combination of the push and pull brushes to bring out certain ridges all around and once I was mostly happy with the overall shape, the smooth tool helped even out all of those pixelated edges. Then I set my brush to a small size and intensity, about 20 to 30%, and drew lines from the top down where I wanted the edges more defined. This is to exaggerate the lines between the various faces of the mountain, giving it a more realistic look, and it also will help with rock placement later because this is generally where the angle of the mountain changes and therefore the angle the rocks will be placed at. Lots of slow, fine detail work, which obviously doesn't look that slow here, but this mountain took a good hour to take shape. A little bit of auto terrain paint to better see the steep portions and then moved on to the ground of the enclosure, which I also wanted to slope towards the path, although more gently. These ridges here are paths that I want the sheep to walk on and will be adding rocks along to create a sort of switch back for them. They can climb much steeper areas than this even in game, but I thought these big flat slabs would add some interest to the habitat and give the eye something to focus on and guide guest view from the ground up. With this concept, I did have to be very careful about checking the animal traversable terrain because it is so easy to place a rock that suddenly blocks animal movement. It is ridiculous sometimes how the hitboxes work in this game, and if there is one mod I would seriously consider installing, it would be the one that reduces the animal hitbox sizes to something a little more believable. But, in order to check our traversable area, we had to create a habitat. So I put the habitat gate in this placeholder location to get our doll sheep in, one male, one female for now. This is where the rock work truly began and I was back and forth between placing rocks and checking to see how much of their enclosure the sheep could access. I'm not sure I've ever built for the doll sheep before this video. I wouldn't say hoofstock is low on my list of liked animals, but I am definitely a bigger fan of canines and felines. Plus, I don't think I've seen a doll sheep in real life, but I have seen plenty of mountain goats and bighorn sheep, which are both species that I would love to see in Planet Zoo, but for now the doll sheep will do. I did do a bunch of research since I was unfamiliar with this species and learned that the doll sheep, named after William Healy Doll, a scientist who led surveys in Alaska during the late 1800s, are the northernmost wild sheep in the world, living in subarctic regions of Alaska and Canada. Their natural environment includes plenty of steep cliffs and rocky outcrops, which they are specially adapted to. Basically, their hooves are two-toed, so they fall into the even-toed ungulate category alongside deer and goats but these toes are flexible so they can more easily stand on uneven surfaces. They also have rough pads on the bottom of their hooves to help with traction, which allows them to climb incredibly steep mountain faces where predators like bears and wolves can't follow. So that was one of the big reasons why I designed this habitat the way I did. The slopes are just so important to their environment and behavior. This next part had me nearly screaming in frustration, but I'm so glad I stuck with it because I am in love with the end result. I wanted to have a guest pathway above the habitat so that visitors to the zoo could essentially climb the slopes alongside the doll sheep. 
kind of a day in the life of a sheep but not quite as steep. So in order to make that happen I had to edit my mountain a bit and create a switchback for guests to climb up the side which would be accessed behind the sheep building that you saw me put in on the left side of the habitat. Once again using the square stamp tool and the advanced movement menu with angle snap on to rotate and slide the stamp along to get a perfect even slope that should allow me to add a path all the way up. A little bit of improvisation at the bottom but the train tools are getting easier to manage thankfully which is something I always forget. In order to get better at doing something you have to well do it and that's hard because the biggest obstacle between you and doing something more often is your dislike of that thing because you're not good at it but in order to get better you need to do it just a never-ending cycle but once it's broken i can definitely say it gets better like these paths very happy i didn't let all of the terrain modifications stand in my way this path is definitely a steep one but i think it fits with the idea of the mountain hike and the view of the whole zoo from the top will definitely be worth it it has to be i wouldn't like hiking if the views from the top weren't breathtaking this side part of the mountain will also be covered with plenty of rocks and foliage, though not in today's video. Next week's video will be a continuation of this mountain because I have a bit of a surprise addition for the top that was briefly discussed back in like episode 3 maybe? And it wasn't a fully formed thought back then either, so I'm excited to see how it turns out. But that's for next week. For today, you can see me struggling with the path. Normally, I cut a bunch of this stuff out, but just know that I am nowhere near a perfect builder, and a lot of the issues you run into with Planet Zoo are issues I deal with too. But we do finally get the path to work by sheer force of will apparently, and I am so happy about it. The walkway above the habitat is heavily inspired by a trestle bridge I visited while in Vancouver. I actually used a photo I had taken as a reference for these fences, which ended up being a combination of the Indonesian stained timber beam and mesh. For anyone looking to build more realistically or even just find ideas on what to build, I strongly suggest finding inspiration pictures or just getting out there and being curious and taking pictures of things you find interesting. It could be different styles of architecture or a fence that looks cool or maybe a color combination that you want to use. While my build style isn't hyper realistic, I do like to incorporate little elements that elevate the details just a bit. And then of course, once that first section is built to my liking, we'll copy it across the edge of the walkway. To support the bridge, we have beams that I'm putting in every second fence panel and then we'll be adding our crisscross beams in between. These sorts of timber trestles were very commonly built in the 19th and early 20th centuries to support railroads in the mountains, and a lot of trestles or their ruins can still be seen today, especially in areas known for coal mining because there were lots of railroads there and therefore also trestle bridges. Not only do they look nice, but triangles are also the strongest shapes for supporting weight because they effectively lock into to place. Their vertices won't move under pressure because weight is evenly distributed on all three sides. While the one I'm building isn't a true trestle bridge because I didn't angle the beams or complete both sides, just for piece count purposes, I think it serves its aesthetic purpose very nicely. On to the lower pathway. I wanted something simple, so this fence is a combination of logs, metal beams, and mesh once more, but with lanterns atop every second log I think it ends up being because I just like the way it looked. A lantern lit mountain path. For the backstage, I decided to use the same interior fences as the bison and moose shelters. The sheep have two pens in here, as well as some wall mounted feeders that the in game animals won't actually use, but hey, they look nice. Lined the walls with the European bridge wood panel for some detailing and added the same exterior doors as the moose shelter, though a little bit shorter to fit the building's height. I was careful with the building proportions for this one because I wanted the mountain to feel tall against the buildings and foliage in front of it, so the shorter building made it look more impressive. Some very basic lighting in here with metal beams to support it, but for the roof this time I decided I wanted a skylight to keep it nice and airy in here. The inspiration for the roof came from mountain peaks. I wanted the building to reflect the environment around it and better fit in with its surroundings. 
So what you're seeing is me adding the feeder for probably the 12th time because for some reason it kept saying it wasn't accessible. I actually had to restart the game for it to finally work. So remember, always turn it off and back on again if something isn't working. This goat mountain enrichment item flattened the terrain no matter what I did, so I ended up just redoing the terrain work around it which thankfully didn't affect its accessibility. I definitely felt a little bit of dread before seeing it light up green when I was checking in on it. Terrain painting this habitat was something I kept putting off because I wasn't sure how I was going to make it look at least somewhat realistic, but first and foremost, how to make it look good. The rock paint went under and around all of the rock work I had previously placed, then the rough soil along the edges of that, then the finer soil along areas where the sheep are likely to walk, like the entrance to the shelter or up the mountain pathways, and finally grass where I felt there would be something growing. Uh, I did look at quite a few photos of the mountains, but found it really hard to translate what I was seeing to Planet Zoo. But ultimately, a lot of this will be covered up with plants, so it didn't have to be perfect. I planted up the enclosure with plenty of arrowwood, bracken, ferns, nettles, and diamond leaf willow. And once again found myself wishing for more high elevation plants, as discussed in last week's grizzly bear video. The diamond leaf willow is one of the few tundra plants that I really enjoy in this game, and it can grow in very, very cold conditions. The trees I was careful to place in a way where they gave the mountain more verticality rather than shortening it. Some of the trees have pointier tips, so I kept those ones closer to the base so they won't be competing with the peak of the mountain. The trees with rounder tips, like these ponderosa pines you see me swapping, worked better higher up. While doll sheep don't usually live below the tree line, they do sometimes venture that way and I didn't want the habitat to feel too bare in the end. I also added these bushes to fill out some corners, which is actually the elm tree sunken into the ground. I really like the bright green of it, and the silhouette of the leaves lends itself to creating bushes like this nicely. Some final touches in the form of fallen branches and twigs, as well as more small rocks to join the big boulders to the landscape. These are the parts I always forget about, but they make such a big difference. Lastly, lighting. These tall spotlights are all over True North Sanctuary to help illuminate choice areas of the habitat at nighttime, which True North is likely to be in for a lot of the year because it's in a northern location. I usually set them up so feeding and enrichment areas are visible even once twilight falls. Welcome to today's tour. We are starting on the mountain hike path. To our left is the great gray owl aviary. To our right is the wolf watchtower. All the way back there. And then straight ahead is the path that takes us past the brand new dull sheep enclosure. And one of them is actually over here to welcome us. Oh, both of them are over here to welcome us. How nice of them. Right here is the goat mountain enrichment item that took a lot of terraforming to incorporate into the landscape. And then over the habitat, we can see the trestle walk that uh, guests can also use to see this habitat. And make our way forward. Oh. Oh, there are big rocks under this pathway. That's probably what is happening here. Now, lots of viewing opportunities for the doll sheep. We have this forage feeder. We have the Scots pine that I think they can use as a scratching post. Um, and then we also have another scratching post here, as well as the feeding area. So lots of places to see them and their natural behaviors. Are you putting on a show for us? Yes, you are. These sheep actually haven't been renamed yet. They still have the names that they came with from the Frontier Zoo. So if you have any mountain related names that you think would work for them, please do leave those in the comments. Making our way over to the side of the building, we see a big mountain mural. So as we get closer to it, we can see 
these kind of broad paint strokes. I did just use a billboard and um, I made a an image in Photoshop more artistic looking. I used one of the uh, painting filters. So closer up, it looks like big brush strokes, but as you back away, it becomes a very nice image of mountains. And I thought that echoed the mountain peak up there very nicely. Let's check out the backstage area for our sheep, which this part hasn't really been um, completely designed yet. Um, we're obviously missing railings and that part we're going to explore next week, but for today we'll head in here. So we just have two pens and then around this way we have the entry into the habitat. Just like that. So let's check out the actual habitat. There are various levels here. So we have this sort of main level. They can also go down there right next to the railing. And then they can also make their way up this slope here. And it is a switchback. So they have a landing there and then they can keep climbing or they can choose to go down this way. And then that takes them up to that goat mountain enrichment item over here. So plenty of room to run around, lots of mountain climbing space, which they need. So we're gonna pop up to the trestle walk above the habitat. Okay, our first view from the trestle walk are these gorgeous mountains all around True North. Those mountain peaks look so, so good from here, as they do from most other places, but it's just so nice to see them up here as well. And down below, we can see basically all of True North, all the way over to the moose shelter over there. And then hopefully soon we'll be able to see the Arctic zone in this empty area between the trees here. But if we look down, we get a pretty steep view, a uh, sheep's eye view almost, of their habitat. And we can see just how much of their time is spent climbing these slopes. I do also like the view of the building from up here. You can see the um, triangular design of it so that it does look a little bit more like mountains as well. It's really cool when you're standing up here and you can see them on this ledge here. Like this one. Perfect timing. Yeah, and they're basically climbing almost vertical faces, which is really, really cool. And look out over True North. How beautiful. And you can hear the wolves howling in the background too. That's so cool. Okay, there is one last thing that you can see from here right there that I would like to show you for today. So to break up our pathway between the salmon run, which we're standing on right now, and the dull sheep path, which is over there, I wanted to fill this space with something other than a garden bed. So I went with a an educational, another educational area where we have a fake river or pond, and then we have these salmon statues leaping out of it to help um, keep that idea of the salmon run going all the way along this pathway. These are Drax fish statues. I kind of stole them from his menagerie zoo, but it was with permission. So <laughs> yeah, I think they turned out so cool. And you can also see this little area from up there. So it's a way of getting our guests interest and in getting them to come down here. So there is a pathway here as well that connects the two. And you do get a glimpse of the fake pond over here as well. Up this pathway, we just have a few bathrooms so that people can make a pit stop on their way. Oh, the rocks are in our way again. And then here we get another great view of the dull sheep habitat.
some big changes visible from the drone cam today. This map is filling out nicely. Remember to comment some mountain related names for our sheep and like this video if you enjoyed. It really helps me continue doing this. Also, subscribe to see what happens with the rest of this mountain build. See you next time. Bye.